Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity that I guarantee you've never had before. I've had many sit-downs in my life, and there's one in particular that I'm going to um, bring you into. You're going to be in this sit-down. It's going to be a simulated sit-down. We're going to give you that opportunity, and we're going to see how you would react to certain things, what your responses would be, how you would handle a certain situation. You're going to get knowledge on street knowledge that you can't get anywhere else. You just click on to the link below, okay, and get involved in this. You're going to enjoy it. I guarantee you're going to want more, and you're going to learn from it. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. And yes, everything is blessed on this end. Praise God for that. And I always give God the glory for all the blessings that I have in my life. And uh, hey, subscribers, thank you very much. Keep them coming. You're getting us up there. You've been supporting us. We're trying to give you the best content we possibly can. We work hard at it. And we thank you uh, for participating and for enjoying whatever it is we put in here. So thank you. The numbers are growing, and we appreciate that. MichaelFrancis.com, the inner circle, my crew, you got to be part of it. I'm telling you, this community is growing, and people are loving one another. They're loving what they're getting out of it. We're doing life skills and leadership skills and personal skills, and people are really, really, really getting something out of it. So, michaelfrancis.com. We got another scene from a movie today that really stands out. The movie The Irishman, I'm sure many of you saw it. It's on Netflix. You can see it anytime. Three hours now, but it's great to sit through. Martin Scorsese, all the great actors, you probably know the deal. A couple of scenes that really stood out for me. Did the movie really work? I reviewed it. It was okay. What got it for me is I knew Sheerhan, I knew the story wasn't accurate. Sheerhan did not kill Jimmy Hoffa, nor did he kill Joey Gallo. Something that I was pretty close to was our family. I knew what went down there. So that kind of killed it for me. But, you know, brilliantly acted. Scorsese, you know, he's one of the best. I mean, I, anything he does is great. So the story was a little off. But if you watch it as a movie, it was great. For me, I thought Joe Pesci was terrific as Russ Buffalino. I knew Russ Buffalino, had the pleasure of being in his company a few times when I was younger, you know, at my early days in that life. He was a gentleman as far as I'm concerned. It was a real departure for Joe Pesci to play that type of role. He's always the crazy guy, but he played Russ Buffalino beautifully. And of course, um, for me, I thought that Pacino was terrific as Jimmy Hoffa. He was just terrific. De Niro, a sheer hand, he was good. Robert De Niro is always good. But for me, I'm telling you, uh, Pacino was terrific. He really was. Now, I didn't know Jimmy Hoffa. I didn't know if that was the way he really acted. Saw some clips about him and heard some things about him. But I don't know if that's the way he really was in real life. But it doesn't matter. Pacino was terrific. And there's one particular scene, one particular scene that I really thought we can get something out of. And I can break down for you and tell you if this would really be acted this way in real life or whether it was just for the screen. Let me set it up for you. Jimmy Hoffa had gone to prison. He was out of, uh, you know, the boss of the Teamsters. He was out. But now he's back, and he wants to get back into leadership. Fitzsimmons is now the leader. Hoffa had passed it over to him, but Hoffa wants his position back. He said, hey, it's my union, so he wants back. But what does he have to do? He has to get other people in the union to endorse him. That's how it goes. So, Tony Provenzano, who was a made guy out of Jersey, you know, he was a powerful union guy also. He had a local. And Jimmy Hoffa wants Tony Pro to endorse him. Now, they've got bad blood between them. Prior to this scene that I'm going to describe, they were together in prison. Now, Tony Pro's a made guy. They came to blows in prison. That would not really happen because if it happened, Hoffa would have been dead right after that. You don't hit a made guy. Tony Pro could have asked for his life at that point and he would have got it. Okay, but they had bad blood. They didn't like him. And, you know, the thing about this scene is that sometimes in that life, people are so technical. You know the thing, you can't see the forest through the trees? Well, that's what happened in this alleged sit-down. Was it a real sit-down? You know, kind of, but there wasn't really a guy there that was going to make decisions. 
you know, Tony Pro was the only made guy. Sheerhan was there. He wasn't a made guy. And then Tony Pro's driver or, or guy was there also. And then Jimmy Hoffa. So it wasn't a real official sit down. But it was cool the way it came down. Let me set it up. They're sitting down. And prior to Tony Pro getting there, they're in Florida. It's the summertime in Florida. Prior to Tony Pro getting there, we see Hoffa and Sheerhan. And Hoffa's upset because Tony Pro is late. He's dressed in a suit. He's upset. Very technical guy. He's saying he's late. He's 10 minutes late. I don't wait for anybody. Let's go. And uh, Sheerhan is saying, De Niro is saying, you know, just, just wait, Jimmy. You know, wait. He, he'll be here soon. Wait. So Tony Pro shows up and he's in shorts and he's in Florida dress. You know, it's the summertime. It's hot there. So they sit down and immediately Hoffa starts to give it to Tony Pro. You're late. You're 10 minutes late. He said, I never waited for anybody more than 10 minutes in my life. Now understand, they're there for a reason, something really serious. Hoffa wants Tony Pro to endorse him to become, you know, boss of the Teamsters again. That was the main part of the meeting, and it was important, very important, right? But here we go. You're 10 minutes late. I never waited for anybody more than 10 minutes in my life in a meeting. Tony Pro looks at him and he says, no, I think 15 is right. 15 is right. And they're going back and forth over this technicality for a couple of minutes. And then Hoffa looks at him and says, is this how you dress for a meeting? He's in shorts. And Tony Pro looks at him, is that how you dress in a suit in Florida in summer in, the aug in August in this heat? And they're going back and forth over the dress. It's becoming an issue. The main issue isn't even talked about or discussed yet, right? So finally they get to that and they're going back and forth. 15 minutes is okay. It's acceptable because of traffic. Jimmy Hoffa says, no, I figure in the traffic when I say 10 minutes and they're going back and forth over nonsense. It's already heated before they get to the main issue. Nonsense. But you know what? This happens sometimes in those sit-downs. If you don't have a good guy in control, little stuff starts to get into the way. And you know, another thing I'll tell you, the old time was very cagey. They tried to trap you into getting sidetracked with stuff and maybe getting upset so you would say something out of the way, maybe something disrespectful, then you lose the sit-down. So you had to be really conscious to stay on point, something they didn't do in this sit-down because like I said, nobody was really there saying, hey, get to the point, what are you here for? for Forget all the nonsense. If I was moderating that, I'd say, hey, I don't want to hear any of this stuff. You got something here, Jimmy, tell him what you want, and let's get an answer out of him and see if we're going to go forward. That's how I would have handled it. But they're going back and forth. So finally, Tony Pro says, well, what do you want? And he said, I want you to endorse me. And Tony Pro says, you want me to endorse you? He says, I'll do it. But first, you've got to take care of the other thing. Now, Jimmy Hoffa doesn't, he says, what other thing? What are you talking about? And he thinks it's something else about his pension fund. Because Tony Pro went to prison, he would lose his pension fund. And, uh, and Hoffa says, there's nothing I can do about it. Fitzsimmons is the boss now. You've got to go to him. And Tony Pro says, I already went to Fitzsimmons. He's taking care of that. You wouldn't, but he's doing it. Now, that's another thing that they're mad about, right? So then Hoffa says, well, what is it? What is it about? And Tony Pro says, I want an apology. The apology for what? Well, they had this skirmish in prison, and Hoffa was disrespectful to Tony Pro in prison, made guy. Tony Pro says to him, you know that thing when you were eating, eating the ice cream, because Hoffa was eating ice cream when this thing came down. And he also said, remember what you said? You said, these people, that's what Tony Pro was saying. In other words, it was almost like a racist remark from Jimmy Hoffa to Italians. He said, these people, and Tony Pro took offense to it. Now, you know what? Again, a little technicality, but the old timers, many of them, this is true to fact. They would have looked at something like that, been very, I had to sit down myself with a guy by the name of Mario. We're going to get into it. As a matter of fact, you're going to have an opportunity at some point in time to be in a simulated sit down. We're going to give you that opportunity and we're going to see how you would react to certain things, what your responses would be, how you would handle a certain situation. You're going to get knowledge on street knowledge that you can't get anywhere else. All right. You're going to enjoy it. Trust me. And it's going to hone your skills and negotiation and leadership and learning how to read people so important but anyway yeah he took offense to that these people that's what you you say like you're, you're looking down on me and Hoffa says yeah I look down on you you are beneath me so now this is going in the wrong way now Hoffa is asking for a favor from somebody that could really be helpful to him right Tony Pro he's got a big local underneath him and he's got big membership and Hoffa needs him in order to get back into the top spot and he's getting sidetracked with all of this nonsense you're asking for a favor you want to talk down to the guy too ridiculous right you don't do something like that obvious 
Anyway, it starts to get heated, 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 heated. And Hoffa says, I'll apologize to you, but you got to apologize to me first. Blah, 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 blah. Goes back and forth, back and forth. Sheerhan is trying to calm things down. Tony Pro's driver's trying to calm things down. Hey, we're here for a reason. Let's settle it. But they don't have any juice, any authority. And these two guys are not listening to them. Finally, Tony Pro, he blows. He said, you know what? I'll apologize to you after I kidnap your granddaughter. And he gets, says some disgusting things. Hoffa goes crazy. Crazy, jumps on him and they're fighting on the floor. Now, immediately, if something like that were to happen, Hoff is wrong. You don't use your hands, especially to a made guy. He could have had him killed in a second. We know Hoffa did get killed later on, but that's how the scene ends. And so nothing gets accomplished. Hoffa doesn't get the endorsement. These two guys are fighting. It was a half an hour over petty nonsense that didn't get anybody anywhere. This is not how you sit down in a negotiation. Great scene, you know, very entertaining, but nothing accomplished. So what are the takeaways from this sit down? And remember, this wasn't an official sit down because nobody really called for it in that way. There wasn't somebody there moderating like a boss who had authority over the both of them. There was only one made guy at the sit down. Honestly, in real life, Tony Pro would have been the leader of this sit down. Hoffa would have been respectful to him. He wouldn't have got off the way he got off. So it wasn't a real sit down, you know, an official sit down. But what are some of the takeaways from this meeting, sit down, whatever you want to call it? Number one, Hoffa did not come in with the right frame of mind. He needed something. He needed Tony Pro. He he needed that endorsement. He did not come in prepared. He didn't come in with the right frame of mind. He had his ego that really overrode the entire meeting, the entire purpose for him being there. Tony Pro had nothing to lose. He was being asked a favor of. He had nothing to gain out of this. So what did he want? All he wanted was an apology because his ego too, he felt insulted. So this was a battle of egos. There was nothing else. There was nothing to be accomplished there. So you didn't, what do you learn here? You don't go into a meeting when you want something okay, and let your ego run the show because you're not going to get anywhere. My opinion, Hoffa should have went in there and said, look, I apologize. I got a little bit crazy. I got to, yeah, okay, I apologize. No problem. I shouldn't have done it. We were in prison. You know how things happen. We're having a bad day, whatever. I need your endorsement. That would have been the way to handle it. Now, when you walk out, you can call him every name under the sun. You can take what you want under the breath. You can say, you know what? This was a strategic withdrawal at this point, but I'll get back at him someday. Wait till I become his boss and I take over the leadership again. Then I can deal with Tony Pro. But he didn't think that. Way. Instead, he screwed up the whole meeting. He didn't get Tony Pro's endorsement. And in real life, he would have got killed. He was on the wrong side of this meeting. Tony Pro, like I said, he had nothing to gain, nothing to lose. He didn't care. You need my endorsement? Okay. Just tell me you're, you're sorry. That's all he asked for. It wasn't out of the ordinary. Give me an apology. That's it. My ego is, it feels better at that point in time. All the other stuff was just nonsense. Got sidetracked. It was just nonsense. Again, if somebody were there controlling this sit down, hey, I don't want to hear about 10 minutes. I don't want to hear about 15 minutes. I don't want to hear about traffic. I don't want to hear about anything else. Hoffa, what do you want? Ask the question right now. What do you want? I need his endorsement. Tony, are you ready to do that? No, not at this point. Why? I want him to apologize. He insulted me in prison. Hoffa, apologize to him if you want. If you don't, meeting over, you don't get the endorsement, we go home. That would have been it. That's how it should have been handled. And it would have been a 15-minute deal, and that would have been the end of it. And maybe Hoffa then would have said, look, uh, okay, hold on a second. You know what? Let's, let's get back to what we're here for. Anyway, back and forth, back and forth. There's a lot you can learn uh, from this meeting. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity that I guarantee you've never had before. I've had many sit-downs in my life, and there's one in particular that I'm going to um, bring you into. You're going to be in this sit-down. It's going to be a simulated sit-down, and we're going to ask you, in certain situations during this sit-down, how you would have reacted. I'm going to see if you are prepared going in. I'm going to ask you questions about how I handled it and how you would have handled the same situation. And I guarantee you, if we do enough of these, I'm going to hone some skills in you that you probably don't have at this point in time. You're not going to learn this in school. You're not going to learn it in a business meeting. You learn it on the street, and we're bringing the street to you in this situation. So you just click on to the link below, okay, and get involved in this. You're going to enjoy it. I guarantee you're going to want more and you're going to learn from it. That's it for today. So how do I always leave you the same way? Be safe. Be healthy. You got to keep your health, man. You're in the gym? I hope so. God bless all of you. And I really mean that in times like this, we need God's blessing. The whole world does. And yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.